What the heck are all these settings and what do they even do? I'll be showing you all the necessary streaming settings you need for Streamlabs OBS. In order to start streaming on YouTube, I have the memory of a goldfish and the patience of a small child, so I'll keep it as easy as possible. If that sounds good to you, make sure to drop a like on the video. And I know we're talking about YouTube today, but it's spooky season, so I'm gonna wear my spooky Twitch shirt for this video and my spooky pajama pants. Let's get into the video. Now that we have Streamlabs OBS open, let's go into the bottom left corner and click on the settings icon. And you can see we have so many different tabs here, but don't worry about it. We're gonna simplify it for you. First up on our journey is the general tab. There really is isn't anything too complicated on here and you don't have to change anything it's all optional so we're going to skip to the good stuff so we're going to move to the stream tab this is where you're going to want to link your youtube account if you don't see any of this or it doesn't look like this then make sure that you're logged in on the bottom left right here with your youtube account once you're logged in with your youtube account it should look a lot more similar to this once your youtube channel is linked that's all we need for the stream tab so we're going to move to the output tab the output tab is the main reason why first time streamers get really upset and half the reason why i have a bald patch on the top of my head what we want to do is change the output mode to advanced and it'll open up more settings for us to mess with. We'll start with the streaming tab. Audio track one, and then we're going to look at our encoder. If you have NVIDIA NVEC new, select that one. If you don't, choose whatever else you have here. And if you have none of those, you can go ahead with X264. In this case, I'm going to use NVEC new. For the rate control, we're going to choose CBR. For our bit rate, we need to see what our upload speed is. So we're going to go to speedtest.net and see what upload speed you have. My upload speed is 8 megabits per second, which is 8,000 kilobits per second. Now that we have our upload speed, let's see what we can stream at. I'll leave this handy dandy chart in the description down below so you guys can get a better look at it. It also goes over a bunch of bit rate and a bunch of other questions if you guys are having problems with it. Since my upload speed was eight megabytes per second, that means that I have 8,000 to play with, but they recommend taking off 20% of that in case your internet starts to fluctuate. So that leaves me with just enough room to stream at 1080p, 60 FPS. But if you have different upload speed, you just follow the chart and then it'll tell you which recommended settings that you should start with. So we're just gonna input these recommended settings. So rate control is CBR. The bit rate is going to be 6,000. The keyframe interval is going to be two. I'm going to leave the profile to high. Psychovisual tuning is checked. GPU is zero and max B frames is going to be two. Real quick, I'm going to jump to the video tab because this is directly related. So we'll click on the video tab and we'll set our base canvas resolution to whatever our monitor is. Mine happens to be 1080p. The output resolution is what we want to stream at. So in this case, 1920 by 1080. So I'm going to change that to 1920 by 1080. Downscale filter is going to be Lanskos. FPS type is going to be common FPS value. Value. And since we want to stream at 1080p 60 FPS, we're going to click 60 for our common FPS value. So let's go back to output. So the streaming tab is all good and great. That's all set up. You can mess with the recording settings here, but since this is a YouTube streaming video, let me know in the comments down below if you want me to make one just for recording because the settings are different. The audio tab, you can set everything to 320. And the replay buffer is a little complicated, but it's not necessary for streaming whatsoever. So you can have it disabled if you want. So let's move to the audio tab. <laughs> If we want the best audio quality, we want to do 48 kilohertz for the sample rate. Channels are stereo. For the desktop audio device one, you want to have whatever your speakers are. So if you want, you can use default and it'll choose whatever default speakers you have set up for your computer. Or if you know exactly what you're using, you can click on the individual device. Then you want to pick your microphone for your mic auxiliary device one. And that's just going to simply be your microphone device. Since we've already done the video tab, we're going to move on to hotkeys. What a hotkey does is basically you can click on an action, put a key. So in this case, I'll put the number eight. And then anytime I press the number pad eight, it'll do this action. So if I press the number pad eight, it'll start my stream. And then if I wanted to end my stream, I could do a hotkey for stop streaming like number pad seven. And then anytime I press number pad seven, it would stop my stream. And you can do this for any of these here. So one thing I'd recommend is actually going into your scenes and then you can go all the way down for your, one of your scenes and you can have your switch to scene hotkey. So anytime I press number pad one, it's gonna switch to this scene instead of having to go into Streamlabs and click on your scenes in the bottom left corner. But you can get pretty crazy with that. So explore and have fun with it. So let's go to the advanced tab. This tab is the main reason why I'm starting to get gray hair at the age of 27, but I promise there's really nothing you have to worry about on this tab because we're only going to be changing a few things. For the process priority, I personally have it at high. And what that does is it takes Streamlabs OBS and puts it as a higher priority than the game I'm playing or any other software that my computer's running. So that way I'm less likely to drop frames and cause lag for my stream. And if my computer can't handle both of them, then my game will start to lag and that'll be an indicator that, hey, your computer cannot run this, but the stream should be more steady. So that's entirely up to you and your setup. 
setup. So if you want, you can leave it at normal, but personally, I like it at high for those reasons. The only other thing that I'd recommend changing is scrolling all the way down and then make sure that dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming is enabled. And that'll just make sure that it lowers your bitrate in case your internet speed starts to drop. So that way, instead of skipping, it'll just decrease the quality of your stream. And that's really it for advanced. So I got those gray hairs for nothing. So let's move on to scene collections. And this is if you go to own.tv, buy one of their stream packages, which I'd recommend, link in the description down below. So if you click on the import overlay button, you can import that file that own.tv gave you for your stream package, and it'll automatically import it for your Streamlabs OBS. If you want to know more about that, I'll leave a video in the top right corner that I do exactly that. But let's move over to the notifications. The notifications are important because it'll tell you if you start dropping your frames. So I like to have it at 25%. You could even have it lower at 10%. So if you skip 10% of your frames or you drop 10% of your frames, Streamlabs is going to be like, hey man, something's going wrong. You need to lower your settings because your computer or internet speed can't handle it at this time. So I recommend having those on. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bald patch just like me. So let's move to appearance. Obviously, you want to use night mode because otherwise you might be a psychopath. Chat settings, make sure this is enabled. And then we're going to move to the remote control option. If you guys have heard of the Elgato Stream Deck, basically you can scan this QR code with the Streamlabs app on your phone and it will mimic the Stream Deck. So that way you can have your phone next to you. You can click on different scenes and edit your stream in case you don't have an Elgato Stream Deck like myself because I'm poor AF. So please like this video so I can feed my cat. The virtual webcam is honestly a new thing and most of you guys will never use this. But if you're into video conferencing and you want to share your screen like through Zoom, then it'll make OBS into a webcam so that way you can use it through Zoom and some other things. But it's experimental feature so it might have bugs. This is the game overlay option and I know a lot of one monitor streamers are going to love this one. But you can enable the in-game overlay and it'll show your chat and your events over your game while you're playing in case you only have one monitor. But like they said, this is a new experimental feature so it might have bugs or it might not work for you, but it is cool option for those that are interested. And then they have the get support where if you guys have any questions whatsoever, you can leave them in the comments down below, or you can go to community discord there, or you can go to their Streamlab support because they're going to help you better than I can. Watching this video to the side of me is absolutely crucial if you want to start streaming to YouTube. So watch this video. Comment down below, Spooky Gang, if you made it to the end of the video. My name's Cody, and I'll see you in the next one.